You can do whatever you want to do, Ditto. It's your choice, okay? You can lay in the bed or you can lay in the crate. It's your choice. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Pharaohs. Good morning, Ditto. Are you ready for some breakfast? I just put Ditto's breakfast together for him. He's having a scoop of the homemade raw food with some water mixed in and both of his medications mixed in, the gabapentin and the Veriflox. And I put a uh, part of a churu on top uh, to entice him to eat. So hopefully he'll eat all of this. And if he does, I have more food for him. There you go, Ditto. Today, I would like to open the door to this crate and let him out. The reason why I kept him in here um, until now is that last night I wanted to sleep in this room, but I wanted to keep him in the crate because I wanted to keep him calm. And the reasons why I wanted to sleep in this room were uh, because I wanted to just kind of monitor how he's doing, see how he's sleeping. And I also wanted him to get used to me. I wanted him to know that I'm not a threat, that if he sees me sleeping in this room, like I'm not a predator for him. Uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't have to worry about me. And right now I'm sitting close to him and he's eating his food. He went over to it pretty quickly. So I'm hoping that helped a little bit with getting him comfortable with me. Um, I did not get a good night's sleep at all. I tried to go to sleep around 12.30, but I could not fall asleep. Like all night, I could not fall into a deep sleep at all. It was like maybe a light sleep, but then the littlest thing would like wake me up. And I realized that that is how Ditto sleeps. Ditto really doesn't fall into a deep sleep. Um, he just kind of... Um, you know, gets himself into a light sleep for a few minutes and then the littlest thing will wake him up and it's probably a survival mechanism from living outside or it could be that he's just, you know, full of stress and anxiety from uh, being in a house, you know, being in this crate. If we think about, like, what, what's he feeling? What kind of emotions is he going through? Um, it could be causing him anxiety. So... What I would like to do today is open the door to the crate and then just let him, you know, wander around the room. I would like to be in the room when that happens, just to make sure he doesn't get into trouble, but I don't know if he would actually leave the crate while I'm in the room. Um, the other thing that I would like to do is go out and get him his own cat bed. So originally I thought I would let him use this bed, which is Stella's royal bed. But then I was thinking about it, and he might not be comfortable because it smells like the other cats, they've used it. So what I'd like to do is go out and buy him his own bed, so that way it'll be fresh and won't smell like another animal. Good job, Ditto. You're such a good boy. I'm going to go get you some more food, okay? Okay? I just gave Ditto another plate of food, so he has another scoop of homemade raw food, which he's eating now. And I also gave him one of the Primal Raw Rabbit Nuggets. I don't know if he likes it. I hope he does, but that's what's to the left of what he's eating now. And there's a little bit of a churu on top of each one. But he really loves the homemade raw food. So why would I want to give him raw food? Um, instead of canned food or dry food. Um, raw food is closest to a cat's natural diet. So when Ditto lives outside and he's out in the woods and he's hunting and he's, you know, eating mice or chipmunks or birds, whatever he's hunting, he doesn't cook that. He does not cook his food. He eats it raw. And that is what his body is biologically designed to eat, raw food. Um, and when you cook protein, um, you change the structure of it somewhat. 
I mean, denature the protein. So it's actually easier for him to digest raw food than it is for him to digest cooked food. And that's the reasoning behind feeding a cat uh, raw food. They are obligate carnivores, so um, they have extremely strong stomach acid. Some people are worried about you know, bacteria or potential pathogens in the food, but cats have a very different digestive system than humans. And that's really, you know, a very little concern. Raw food diets have also been shown to be very healing. And that's what I want Ditto to do. I really want him to heal and get well and get strong. Maybe put on some weight. That would be good. And with regards to the amount of food that I'm feeding him, I'm just trying to judge it on his level of hunger and um, what he was eating outside. Even though his activity level is very low while he's in this crate, um, he's extremely, extremely thin. And you could feel every bone in his back. So it would be good to put a little weight on him. I don't want to do it too fast, so I'm not going to like give him like six scoops of uh, food at every meal. But I think, I think for now, for now he's getting a good portion. And see, like that, if he decides he's not going to eat at all, that's fine. I'm not going to force him to eat at all. He'll eat what he feels like eating. I'd rather that he had enough and he feels comfortable and satisfied than he feels hungry. Good job, Ditto. So the goal for today is for him to get more rest and um, to see if he comes out of this crate. The other nice thing about having him in the crate is that if one of the other cats should get in the room, I know there's not going to be an issue between Ditto and the other cat. And um, Ditto is FIV positive. And the vet did tell me that I do have to be cautious with him around any other cats that are not FIV positive because if they got into a fight and uh, there was any kind of bites, um, that it could be transferred to the other cats. Now, Boo is also FIV positive and I had to be super cautious when I was integrating him um, into the house with the other cats because the other cats are not. Um, and that took a long time. Um, and I feel pretty comfortable that Pooh's not going to bite anyone. They've gotten into fights, but it's usually swatting fights. Um, there were times when Boo was like nipping at the cats, but it takes a deep puncture wound. Okay, ditto. Okay. All right, I'll stop talking about it. I'll turn your plate around so you could eat more if you want. And then I'm going to, I'm going to go and I'm going to run to the store. It's 9.37 a.m. and I just got back from Target and look, it looks like Ditto took a poop in his litter box. That's very good. Maybe he'll uh, be feeling better. So I just got back from Target. I had to return a few things and I bought Ditto a super comfy cat bed. I wanted to find a round one that is similar to the Amazon basic cat beds that the other cats love so much. So I found this one, it's round. Um, the difference is just like the outer walls of it. I really like this one for Ditto because, um, can you see it's kind of like a semi cave. The other cats don't like cat caves. They don't like to be in anything that's like a bag. So this one, it's nice and exposed, but it does have this higher side so he could feel safe inside of it while at the same time being exposed. So I'm going to put this, um, over to the side for him. This was 1999. This is Boots and Barkley. The other thing I picked up were these Refresh cleaning wipes. It says it's a pet friendly formula, uh, remove dirt and odor, easy cleaning from head to tail. So um, I've had similar cat wipes that I've used on the cats in the past um, when they were indoor outdoor cats or when they first came inside just to kind of help them along with their grooming. So I bought these and these were like $7.99. Ditto looks very comfortable right now. He seems pretty content. So I am going to go 
feed the other cats. I have not given them breakfast yet. I wanted to run to the store uh, quickly before things got busy and I had to wait on all kinds of lines. Oh, and look, he ate the rest of his food. So maybe he does like that rabbit food. He just had to get used to it. Uh, I'm gonna go feed the other cats and I'm gonna feed myself. I haven't eaten anything. And then I'll be back in a little while and I want to sit in this room um, when I open the door of this crate just to see what um, Ditto does and uh, how he responds. He might not even come out of the crate while I'm in the room, but I just want to uh, see if he does. So I'm going to have to set aside, you know, a good 30 to 60 minutes just to sit here and kind of observe him. So I need to get some other stuff done. I have a long list of things that I need to do today and I am beyond exhausted from not getting any sleep last night or very little sleep last night. So, um, yeah, today's going to be a very big juggling act. Ditto, you doing okay though, right? Yeah, he's doing okay. Here's Boo. Boo is very concerned about what's going on in his room. And pretty much every time that I leave the recovery room, as I'm now calling it, Boo's in the hallway right outside. So I tell him he's a very good cat to be so concerned and to be so helpful and to keep guard, right? Right, Boo? You're keeping guard on what's going on in there. It is 11 a.m. and Hydrox finally ate some food that I put out for him. That is awesome. I keep telling him that Ditto is okay and that everything is fine. So maybe he's starting to feel a little bit better or maybe he's just super hungry. Since Hydrox is in the mood to eat, I just gave him another half of a can of food. We'll see how he does and I put rocks around his plate so it doesn't move around. He just ate what I gave him and I gave him some more. It is 12 p.m. I got the cats fed, I got myself fed, I got all of the plants in the yard watered. They're really drying out because they haven't been watered in the past few days. And I have my computer with me and I thought I'd sit here and maybe work on some videos or get some work done while I hang out with Ditto. So I'm just about to open this crate and we'll see if he wants to come out. He might want to just stay inside the crate, but we'll see. Okay, Ditto. Would you like to come out? Would you like to come out? He's thinking about it. He might not want to. He might be very comfortable. Don't forget he's had since he's had pain medicine and he's had his antibiotic today. So I'm just going to sit here and be quiet and do my work and we'll see what he does. He might not come out until I leave the room, but I plan on sitting here for at least about a half hour. Hopefully he won't freak out if he does venture out of the crate. I do have the window shut. I just rearranged the room a little bit, so I put the new cat bed right here, pretty much just outside of the crate, so he doesn't have to go far. He just has to go from here to here, and I could put some catnip in there if I wanted to, but I'm not going to just yet. What are you doing? It's 12.45 p.m. and Ditto has been trying to sleep. He really wants to get some rest. So 
I've just been sitting here reading a book about uh, natural cat health. So I'm going to grab my book and my computer. I thought I was going to do some work on my computer, but I don't want to disturb him. I want to just keep everything as quiet as I can in here. So I'm going to go grab my stuff. I'm going to leave the room. I'm going to leave the crate open and we'll see if he, um, if he comes out of the crate. It's about 2 p.m. And the cats usually have a little snack at 2 p.m. So I'm going to give Ditto some food. And I'm going to leave it here right outside of the crate. So if he wants to eat it, he could stick his head out of the crate to eat it. And I'm going to take that other, the other paper plate away. I'm going to take it away. It looks like he has a little food on his back because he was probably laying on it. So he's been resting nicely in the crate. He doesn't really want to move out of it. So... I'll put the food there. He could have it if he wants it. He's looking at it and he's thinking about it. He is on two medications right now, so he might not be acting as he normally would be acting. I need to clean out his litter also, but I don't want to disturb him. I was hoping he would move from the crate to a cat bed, and then I would be able to uh, clean the litter without disturbing him. So it looks like he does not want to put any weight on his paw. Oh, look at this. Look. The one problem with the paper plates is that they do slide around. He could put his paw on it if he wants to. If he puts his paw on it, it stops it from sliding around. But with it sliding around, it'll make him come farther and farther out. There we go. There we go, Ditto. So, it's um, just a little bit of canned food and... I hope it's not getting that new cat bed dirty. Let me move it. I'll move it over. Okay? I'll move it over. You okay? You okay? I'll hold the plate for you. Here, you eat it here. Here, I'll hold it. Here. There you go. This grabber that I'm using, um, I got it at a local dollar store. It was like a dollar, and it works great with, with the cats. I have one for outside, and this is the one I keep inside. The cats like to play with it, actually, but it does help, for example, if Splash is hiding under the bed or something, or in situations like this where a cat may be hesitant to get too close. Okay, it's just a snack, Ditto. Just a snack. You'll have more food later, okay? Okay, good job, Ditto. I'm trying to catch his drool. Okay. You got everything, I think. Maybe a few crunchies. Good job, Ditto. Good job. Okay. Here, you want this one on the floor? Here, right here. You gonna go back in your... You gonna go back in the crate?
That's it. You'll have more later, okay? Just a snack. It's just a snack. You're doing very good, Ditto. You're doing very good, Ditto. You're going to go back in your crate. You have that nice blanket to lay on. You want to go in the bed? Here. Want to go in the bed here? There's a nice bed here. Look, it's nice and soft. You decide. You can do whatever you want to do, Ditto. It's your choice, okay? You could lay in the bed or you could lay in the crate. It's your choice. You can choose whatever you feel most comfortable with, okay? I want you to be comfortable and I want you to sleep good. Where would you like to sleep better? I just moved another bed over for him. This is the bed with the blanket in it. He's looking at it. He's looking at it. The thing is, if he uh, if he sleeps in it, I'll have to walk past him, which I hope doesn't disturb him. Okay, so he has chosen to go back into the crate. He's sniffing around. He might be looking for more food. Now, this blanket um, has not been used by any of the other cats. The cats received it as a gift from a viewer. I think it might have been from Sharon. And um, I have had it... Uh, in a closet. I have like a cat shelf in my closet with blankets and stuff. He can use it if he wants to. He's definitely thinking about it. He's smelling it. Maybe he'll go in the other bed. I have two cameras set up right now. One is a webcam recording, the other is a security camera. The security camera I could check from my app uh, on my phone, and then the webcam is just recording nonstop, so I can have a record of his progress. Go in the bed, go in the bed, ditto, it's for you. Yeah, go in. That's the one I want you to lay in, okay? I bought it just for you. It's nice and cozy, isn't it? It smells like Target. It's for you, Ditto. It's yours. Yeah, it's yours. It's your, your very own bed. It's your very own bed. You can use it. You can use it. You can lay in there. I could always put some catnip in there, but I just wanted to see how he would react to both of these without any catnip or enticement. You're okay. I know you might want more food, but we're going to wait till dinner, okay? I need to make sure he's hungry for dinner, so I don't want to um, give him too much of a snack right now. Okay, you want a little bit more food, Ditto? Want a little bit more? Okay, I'll give you a little bit more. Okay? I just gave him a little bit more of the food. This is um, it's salmon and shrimp. I don't remember the, what kind of food it is, though. It's one of the small cans. And I usually divide the small can into four, and I give uh, the cats each a fourth of the can. I give him an eighth of a can. Let me hold your plate. Well, he has a very good appetite, which is a very good sign. Okay, Ditto, you did good. 
You did very good. Okay? Very good. You ate it all, ditto. That's it. That's your snack, okay? That's your snack. Good job. Good job. Yeah, good job. Now you can go and lay in a bed. You have three beds to choose from. Okay? Three beds to choose from. They're all over here. Okay? And I'll leave you here so you can relax. You're doing very good. You're a very good patient. Okay? Okay. Good job. Ditto. Good job. I'll take these out. Okay? He's going to go back in. So, when Stella, Splash, and Simba first came in the house, um, I let them... Uh, in the house and downstairs. The only part of the house they were allowed was downstairs and they were indoor outdoor cats for several months before uh, becoming permanently indoor cats. Now when Stella and Simba went to the vet to get spayed and neutered, um, from that day forward they were permanently indoor cats and that was like um, that was January of 2017. Stella became an indoor cat December 29th, 2016, because that's when she went in heat. And um, from that time on, I kept her away from any other cat. Um, and then um, when I brought her to the vet to get uh, spayed, I brought Simba at the same time because he sat in a carrier and I was like, okay, you want to go? I shut the carrier and I took him and thankfully um, I was able to get him neutered the same day. And since then, they have never been outside again. They've been completely inside cats. And this is the room that I put Simba in for him to recover. Um, so when they got back from the vet, the vet said to keep them from jumping up and down and to keep them from going up and down steps and to keep them from climbing. So I kept Stella upstairs and that way she didn't have to go up and down the steps. And I kept Simba in this room. And Simba did not want to be in this room. He threw a fit. And the reason why is because Splash was downstairs and because the cats had already been downstairs and they had the run of the place. So he's like, why do I want to be in this room when my brother's downstairs and I could have the run of the place? So it was very hard to keep him contained in this room. I couldn't contain him. I was able to contain Splash in this room for about a day, maybe like 24 hours after uh, he got neutered, uh, but then after that, he didn't want to be in this room either. Now, when Boo uh, came into the house, I brought him to the vet because he was limping also and he had a fever and he wasn't acting like his normal self. And when he got back from the vet, he came into this room. He was in a carrier. I did not have this pet crate at all. So when I let him out of the carrier, he tried to jump out of a window. Like he flew toward the windows. If the windows weren't shut, he would have tried to get out the windows. I then had to calm him down and then once he was calmed down um, he had pretty much the run of this room and things went okay. Um, he adapted to inside life really really well. Um, however with Boo um, he was a lot more advanced than Ditto was. When Boo was living outside I could pet him, I could brush him, um, you know he would rub up against me. He was very friendly toward me. Uh, him and I had a good relationship. Whereas with Ditto, he doesn't let me pet him that much. He's rubbed up against me a few times. He's headbutted me a few times. But it's nothing like um, how friendly Boo was to me. Boo used to love to play. I would play with Boo almost every day. I would have playtime outside with Boo and training sessions with Boo. And I haven't really had that with uh, Ditto. Uh, just because he hasn't been interested. I've tried to play with him and he hasn't really been interested. And we could see there's two toys in this crate and he's really not interested. So when I knew Ditto was going to have to use this room as a recovery room, I wanted to get this pet crate and see if he would be able to adjust to the pet crate. Um, because it's usually what they're first accustomed to um, that they feel comfortable with and they get used to. So you know, thinking back to Boo, Boo spent 
60 days in this room. He was on a two month quarantine. The vet said to keep him quarantined for two months until I was absolutely sure he did not have feline leukemia. A lot of people were saying that's crazy. You don't need to keep him separated for that long, but I was just doing what the vet said. So that's what I did. I figured it couldn't hurt anything. Boo could just have more training. Um, so um, he did spend some of that time outside of this room, but he was separated from the other cats for 60 days. Um, but he did spend quite a few weeks in this room and he loved it. He was absolutely happy with it. Um, so now that Ditto has come in and he's using this pet crate, it could be a similar situation where uh, he feels safe in the pet crate. He's happy in the pet crate. Obviously, he doesn't have to stay in it. The door's open. But if the pet crate is his safe place because this is what he's been accustomed to for his first 24 hours inside, then I'm okay with that. Um, he does have options. There's other beds in this room. There's like that cardboard cat scratcher he could go in. Um, there's a shelf he could look out the window. One other thing, I did want to bring a cardboard box in here because sometimes cats just like the safety of a cardboard box. Uh, but he could go underneath the day sofa that I'm sitting on. There's plenty of little hidey holes if he wants to hide. Um, but so far he just seems to be very, very comfortable in his crate. Uh, he had a snack. So I'm going to go outside now. I'm going to give the other cats their snack. And then I am just going to get on with my afternoon. And I'll check in with him a little bit later. I still need to clean up the litter, give him some fresh water. Usually do that um, in the early evening. So, Okay, Ditto, I hope you're doing well. I hope you like your snack, and I'll see you later. It's 4.45 p.m. right now, and I just wanted to check in on Ditto on the security camera. And look at what's going on. Look, he's using the new bed. So a few minutes ago, he went from the crate to... The new bed, I'm so happy he likes it. It's 5.46 p.m. and look at what's going on here. Ditto moved from the round cat bed to the day sofa. So that's another reason why I wanted to sleep there last night and I spent some time sitting on it today. So he knows that you, know, you can go and you can sit on it and lay on it. So hopefully he'll get comfortable. Hello, Ditto. I gotta clean your water, okay? Listen, I'm gonna clean your water and I'm gonna do your litter so you stay right here. You don't go anywhere, you stay right here. I just gave Ditto some fresh water and I found this tray uh, downstairs and I put the water on this tray outside of the crate and I'll put his dinner next to it just to give him some more room in the crate. It's 8.11 p.m. Look at Simba. He's decided to sit down in that little kitten litter box. I just put some food on the tray for Ditto. And it has one of the capsules of painkillers um, in it. I mixed it in. It's just one scoop of homemade raw food with some water. I want him to eat it. I'm not giving him dinner on the day sofa. He can eat it on the tray. He does drool when he eats. He gets a little bit messy and that's why I don't want to have to start cleaning that up off this day so far. Now everything that's on this, the pillowcases, the sheets, I could throw it in the laundry, but I'd rather that he, um, he eats on the tray. I don't want him getting used to eating on the sofa. All right, so I lied. I ended up putting the tray up here He was trying to meow at me. He's, he still does not have his meow back yet. What I did notice today is that um, like an hour or two ago, his eyes started looking brighter. And I was wondering if it's because like the pain medicine wore off. You know, pain medicine can make people, um, you know, it could just dull the senses. A lot of the times and a lot of times you can you know look at someone's face and see oh they're on uh, they're on some kind of medication or drugs or whatever so um, I kind of felt like maybe that might be the case with ditto but I'm gonna keep him on the pain meds um, at least um, at least another day or possibly two 
like minimum. I might keep them on like the full 10 days. We're just going to take one day at a time. That's it. I'm just going to see how it goes. All right, good job, Ditto. Good job. I have more. I could give you some more. Let me give you more. I'll give you some more, okay? Okay? All right, let me get you some more. I just gave Ditto some more food, and he's having another taste test today. So he has some homemade raw food on the left, which I know he likes, and then um, some Stella and Chewy's chicken on the right. So we'll see what he eats. Everything that I'm giving him is like a soft food. The homemade food does have bones in it, some small bone pieces, but I don't think he's really chewing it. I think he's really just kind of licking it up and swallowing it. Now, I am keeping my distance from him because I don't want to make him uncomfortable. I'm not trying to pet him. I'm not trying to get too close to him. Uh, if I need to grab a plate or, you know, move a water bowl or something like that, um, I'm being very slow and cautious. I don't want to scare him. Today is day two, so this is all very new for him. I don't want to do too many new things too fast. I'm definitely not trying to pet him and you know I don't want to really get too much in his personal space. Ditto really enjoyed his food. I've been kind of rotating the plate because he'll eat it then he'll stop and then I'll rotate it so the food's closer to him. And then um, I've just been trying to make it easier for him. But he enjoyed the food. There's a few pieces left and I told him that's it for his dinner. And later on we can have a snack. So um, that's it. I'm not going to leave this up here because I don't want him spilling water all over the day sofa or anything. He had a very good dinner. There's a lot of liquid in the food that I gave him. I did add extra water. So I'm not worrying about him drinking. There was like three massive pea clumps in the litter box, so um, I'm not worried about uh, him drinking uh, water or getting enough liquid. He's getting a good amount of liquid in the food that I'm giving him. So um, yeah, so I'm going to put the tray on the floor and then I am going to have my dinner because everyone else now has been fed and uh, I'm very hungry. I just gave Ditto still his tablet. I put some squirrel videos on for him. It's a 10 hour video, so hopefully he'll watch it. He jumped down to eat some food, so that's good. We're gonna have some more food later, Ditto. We're gonna have some more food later, okay? Go back up on the sofa and watch your videos. I give you some videos to watch, okay? I just gave Hijack some more food because he ate everything that was on the plate and he uh, was resting on one of the patio chairs. I guess that's where he's been sleeping lately. It's almost 10 o'clock and I just gave Ditto a snack. He's getting a few crunchies and a little bit of canned food. I don't know if he's going to eat it, but I just gave it to him. He's been laying on the day sofa. If you want it, you could eat it, Ditto. If not, I'll put it on your tray, okay? Okay? I'm saying goodnight to Ditto. I'm getting him ready for bed. So he has some squirrel videos on the tablet and he's relaxing on the day sofa. He has water and snacks on the floor. It looks like he used the uh, bigger litter box that's in the room today. So, uh, yeah, it looks like he's comfortable. I mean, come on. What feral cat wouldn't be comfortable in this situation? I could be opening up a hotel for cats. Thank you for watching this Lucky Ferals video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos, and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.